Thank you, ma'am. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Anirban Bhadri for uh, presenting on various uh, clinical manifestations of retinoblastoma. Dr. Anirban Bhadri is a very senior oncologist in Calcutta and has ye decades of experience in uh, managing uh, retinoblastoma in, the, in that side of the country. Decades old as Vikas describes me. <laughs> Thank you, Vikas, for having me on your program. Uh, we all learned our retinoblastoma from Dr. Santosh Honavar. Yes, it was a few decades ago. So what uh, I'll be doing is talking about uh, this aspect of retinoblastoma. Thairus has actually shown you some examples of other presentations of retinoblastoma. So first thing is, what is a masquerade? A masquerade is actually a party. It's a dance party, a ball where people wear masks so that Others don't recognize them. And retinoblastoma is actually one such disease. So uh, why uh, this topic is being discussed is because this one particular child who, whose story hurt me more than anything else. So this was a child who was four years old. He was diagnosed with endophthalmitis in an institution where he underwent a vitrectomy and intravitreal antibiotics were given. And this child did not get better he was actually taken to another institution where he was eviscerated. And a month later, this is how he turned up. Okay, so now you have a frank orbital retinoblastoma thanks to intervention by our colleagues. And this is exactly the uh, problem that we want to discuss so that such incidents don't happen. It's very heartwarming to see so many people in this hall. Earlier, we would have three, four, five, attendees to an oncology session, uh, things are getting better. So this is what we usually see as retinoblastoma, right? A uh, leukocoria. Of course, the leukocoria could have other causes as well. But this is an one presentation which most ophthalmologists recognize. The other is, of course, a fungating mass. Now this, again, is something which is very obvious. Now between these two spectra actually lies several other presentations which are not so easy to diagnose. and the entire purpose of this would be to create awareness so that we look out for retinoblastoma. So these are some of the other presentations. And uh, the LV Prasad group, they had published a very large database. And if you notice that the first two presentations, that is leukocoria and proptosis, that takes care of about 81%. So about one in five retinoblastoma patients actually present with something else. So let's go over each of them one by one. This is a child with a early esotropia, right? But if you look very carefully, there is a, shall I be, okay. So you see this little white glow here? Now what was the first presentation that the child was the squint itself. Now, uh, just a simple dilated examination revealed that there was a tumor in the macula. Now, if all our colleagues examined every child presenting with a squint on the first instance, by a dilated fundus examination, you could pick up retinoblastoma in these children earlier, instead of letting it go. Koi baat nahi, there is a squint, let the child get older and then we'll take care of it. So that is a common response, but that shouldn't be the way we should be dealing with these patients. The next is bophthalmos or pediatric glaucoma. Now, many of these children when they develop a uh, new vascularization of the iris, they go on to develop glaucoma. They present typically with bufthalmos. There is a hazy cornea. You cannot see the fundus. And there have been instances when these children have undergone trabeculectomy with uh, trabeculoplasty. Ending up with a metastasis. Dr. Honavar used to show us one particular slide with a ch child presenting with a huge lymph node. All that you need to do in such patients is before you go in, start glaucoma therapies, just do an ultrasound. Okay, a white eye with a hypopion. Now there's also, you can see the shifting fluid here. And if you look very carefully, there are tiny iris nodules as well. So should we first think of uh, GRA in these patients? Again, do a good examination, EUA, ultrasound examination, and you would find the cause. I'll show you one particular case which uh, was uh, gifted to me by uh, one of our colleagues, Dr. Seema Das from Delhi. And this is a child who again has iris nodules. There is a thick white hypopion, white eye, 
But uh, as Fairu showed in one of our cases, look at the fundus. On a cursory fundus examination, the fundus looks normal. And this is a CT scan of this patient. We'll come back to th this uh, once more. This is what was seen on EUA. So you had two small tumors in the periphery seen on under anesthesia and they were seeding in the past plana as well. And this is the only evidence that we have of the tumor in this patient. So this is an anterior form of retinoblastoma. Okay, hyphema. This is a child who's undergone a hyphema drainage. There is a small suture here. This eye is uh, slightly smaller than the other eye. And uh, this is an ultrasound of that patient subsequently, which shows that there is a mass with intralesional calcification. What was tragic is that the other eye had not been examined. And this child had multiple tumors in the other eye as well. And this is an MRI of the child, which shows a very well seen tumor in the better eye. So simple thing, ultrasound for every patient that you see, where you want to go and do some intraocular intervention. And please do a di dilated bilateral examination every time a child is taken up for an examination under anesthesia. Vitreous hemorrhage, this is a very obvious case because you can see the tumor in this portion, but sometimes the vitreous hemorrhage can completely obscure the fundus. This child has other features of uh, neovascular glaucoma like this ectropian uvia that you see here. But again, if you have vitreous hemorrhage and you want to intervene as a uh, VR surgeon, please first go ahead and do an ultrasound. Simple, cost effective, child with cataract, but you can see these iris nodules. This is a child with retinoblastoma. This is a child who has been operated for a, for a cataract in childhood, and it's only after that that the retinoblastoma was revealed. So these are tragic incidents that should not happen if we are aware that retinoblastoma can have other presentations as well. End of thalmitis, the first child that we showed you who ended up with orbital retinoblastoma is a common misdiagnosis because when retinoblastoma undergoes necrosis, there is intraocular inflammation which can later on spill over to the orbit as well. So this is one of the presentations. So what are we actually looking for when you're doing an ultrasound in a child with retinoblastoma? The first thing is preferably do it yourself. Ultrasound is easily available in most eye institutions if you do it yourself, you will not miss certain features. So what are we looking for? We are looking for a mass lesion. You will not have after movements in a tumor. You can have after movements in the vitreous seeds within the vitreous cavity, but not in the tumor itself. And you're looking for these bright spots, which are the signs of calcification. So if you run the vector through one of those bright spots, only then will you get these high spikes. And this is what we need to look out for. This is another child. So as Fairu said, that retinoblastoma the clinical exam, uh, is a clinical diagnosis. So we wanted chemotherapy for this child. But at that point in time, this is a <laughs> decade and a half ago, when the oncologist said, no, unless you give me a histological diagnosis, we are not going to give chemotherapy. OK, another presentation. As we were saying that the inflammation can spill over to the orbit. This is sterile inflammation. OK. You do an ultrasound and you'll find that actually retinoblastoma lurking inside the eye. And it's not a classic infective orbital cellulitis. So just to summarize, retinoblastoma is a great mimic. And it's extremely important that we need to be aware of these difficult or these atypical presentations of retinoblastoma. So a child presenting with squint, glaucoma, a red eye, proptosis, orbital cellulitis, physical eye, please rule out retinoblastoma before you go ahead with any other kind of intervention. And if you have proper evolution and imaging, as I was saying, we have very easy access to ultrasound B scan now. You would be able to pick up these uh, cases and prevent a disaster. So please do not proceed with any intraocular surgery without ruling out retinoblastoma in these indications that we were talking about. Basically, tim timely diagnosis, referral, and early treatment ultimately holds the key to survival. That is all I have.